Our First Presbyterian Church in Myrtle Point does a, an annual clothing giveaway. We've been doing it for about eight years now, and we don't have any rules with it. People come and take what they want. Um, they, our church members collect clothes throughout the year, whether they use give some of their own gently used clothing, or they go and buy clothing through thrift stores or through local garage sales, um, or even buy things that are new. We have found over the years that it's usually the practical clothing that people need and want. Uh, we focused on getting extra socks and underwear, especially for children. We've had such a wonderful turnout for our little community, we have about 50 people who come regularly, and they, if they're not there that year, we worry about them, but um, they have told us that this is where they do their once a year shopping, is when they come to our clothing giveaway. So we're really trying to be particular about the clothes we get, um, that they are clean and neat, and that there's something we would wear. We don't wanna be giving out something that's filthy or holy. We've had some wonderful stories that have touched our hearts um, f from doing this. Uh, we've had one couple who came and they found wedding clothes for themselves. Th that was really cool. And then last year, we had two instances where people were really in need. One where a woman was getting clothing for her daughter and her family, whose house had burned down a few days before. And then another gentleman came whose car had been broke. He was living in his car. It had been broken into, and he only had the clothes on his back. And all he wanted was one pair of jeans and a T-shirt, and he took socks. And, and but then he wanted to pay us some money too. So if someone does offer us money, we try to be gracious and accept it, and we let them know that then we donate that money to the local food bank. We've had so many clothes from the community that it goes into our sanctuary. And that is really fun to leave those doors open so people feel free to come into the sanctuary and look around. And we've had children who just are amazed. They just are in wonder and start asking lots of questions about what that room is and what it's for. Um, and so it gives us an opportunity to have our church doors open so people feel safe and comfortable here, that, um, that we're trying to do something to make them feel good also. And then, just a few weeks after our clothing giveaway, uh, we have a yearly harvest festival. And probably for about 11 years now, we've been giving out free bottled water at the harvest festival. We get about 400 bottles of water, and we have a little tent we stand under, uh, there's uh, the main street in town is closed off and there's all sorts of vendors out and we just give away water uh, and it's kind of become a cute joke among the community because one of our uh, elders in fact uh, said one time here have some Presbyterian holy water and <laughs> our pastor was shook up but you know, people loved it. They thought that was really neat. So now they get our holy water, and they, they just think it's fun. A lot of times people won't look at us. They think we're going to talk them into coming to church, but that isn't the point. We just want to be nice, want to give away the water, and be um, available to the public that, yes, we are an active church, and we're here to help people too. One of the things we, they, they started before I came, and I hadn't known the story how it started until just recently, was uh, a, a board on which they wrote the prayer requests. Uh, and that happened partly because they had no pastor regularly, and pastors were alternating coming in. And, and so this was a way to keep track of uh, the prayer requests and people that we were asked to pray for. And since I have come here, we've developed that into a caring center where we uh, occasionally take some of those names and we, all of the congregation that's here is invited to sign a card for them and we send the card off. And one of the people that we have been keeping contact with through our care center is 
a son of one of the members of the congregation who is in prison. And it has been just a delight to get the letters back from him as to how much it means that there are people who care about him and, and are willing to do this kind of thing for him. Uh, and that's just been really heartwarming for all of us. It has been. This last fall, one of our church members came up with an idea to restart our Sunday school. We hadn't been having young children come, but we've had one granddaughter come regularly who's just three years old, and we felt like we needed to do something to help her with her Christian upbringing. And so we um, thought of how we could start the Sunday school since we had nobody else within our congregation. And we thought, well, let's invite the children of some of the local community members who came here to Sunday school when they were young. And so we talked to these young adults and they were delighted to have their children come. So we set out two separate blocks of time for our Sunday school and it was in, um, we did our first one at Advent. So for just four Sundays, the kids came and the kids had, there were nine of them who came and seven of them had never been to church before and their ages were from three to 10. Um, and so it was really eye-opening for them. And we started out with a little opening. Uh, Pastor Agnes would come and she would um, have church mouse who was very quiet and would only speak to her and whisper to her um, things about what they were, to were going to learn about that day. And all the kids were fascinated with Little Church Mouse. Uh, it just hit the spot. It even included the high school kids who were there to help us with the younger ones. And one of the older brothers missed a Sunday and he even had to ask his sister, what did Church Mouse say today? <laughs> Which we loved. Here was this kid who's 14 years old wanting to know about Church Mouse and what he had to say. Um, the kids had lots of fun. We did craft projects, games, had a short lesson. We tried to keep them short so the kids could remember things. And the second week they were coming, one of the little boys asked his mom, now, what's that fun place we go to on Sundays? And she said, oh, you mean the church? And he said, yeah, that's the place. And so we became known as the fun place. And we loved that, it was great. Uh, the kids had a wonderful time. Those of us involved with the Sunday school loved it. The kids just became great friends because during our craft time, we would intermingle the two, we had two different classes and they would all come together. So they all became close friends. And then during our opening times, uh, some of the young uh, high school kids in our congregation, they would play the piano. And last week, one of our high school kids played the piano for us during uh, worship and um, as the p regular pianist was gone. And the kids afterwards ran up to him, hugged him and thanked him. And we, we just get a great joy out of seeing these connections throughout the generations. The, um, then we also had a Sunday school during Lent. And the children, once again, were really excited to get started and not to miss a single Sunday. They had to come every Sunday. Uh, we, we had a great time uh, for that. And during that time, we had a mission project. And one Sunday, we had a noisy offering where we collected all the pots and pans from the kitchen and eight of the children went around during a special time for, and we warned the congregation ahead of time to bring coins and they made lots of noise and shook their pans and they filled up these pans with coins and afterwards when we counted the money, we had collected $157. We were just amazed at how many coins we had. The kids thought that was just really great. They loved running their hands through the money when we put it all in one basket. But we went and we bought clothes for our clothing giveaway with the money and brought it back to the church the next week to show the children the school age clothes we got. And they approved of them, which was really great. But we did get socks and underwear and they all were a little embarrassed about the underwear. But it was just really cute. And they were recognizing what they were doing to help 
with other people in our community also, and that made us feel good. And now this year, for our Pentecost offering, as part of that offering that stays within our community, we are going to use that as seed money for a vacation Bible school this summer. And it's probably been 15 years since we've had a vacation Bible school, so we're really excited to get that started again. Well, as has been said, church mouse is a mouse of very few words. In fact, none. He only whispers in my ear. But he is a very, very important part of our church community and, and our ministry and mission to the kids. And you wanted to know what church mouse thinks of what we're doing, right? So let me ask him. Church mouse agrees with me. These things we do are important for our community and important for our church. As a pastor, one of the things that I see happening with, with these various ministries is it's getting us known in the community. Uh, when I'm out and people discover I'm a, a new pastor in the community and they ask me which church and I say the Presbyterian church, I usually get a sort of blank look. And then I say, the church where they give away the clothes and there'll be a light bulb come on. Or that's the church that gives away the water, and then they'll say, and which one's that, where is it? Uh, and, and in terms of being spotted in town, usually I have to say we're the church with the big steeple. But we are getting known in the, con in the community as the church that gives away the clothes, that gives away the water, that, that does things for people in the community. And, and I think that's an important part, not only of our ministry outside our walls, but it's becoming important as we think about how, how do we understand ourselves to be a church as a community of only about 27 Christians gathering to worship, and how do we make an impact with our faith?